Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to an episode of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Spearhead Sundays. We're welcome. He- it's good to be here with my guest, Lewis Spears. No, Thank please you so do much. not take over my show. What's that? Spearhead Sundays. Oh, is that what we're on? Yeah. Oh, sorry. My, my, my mistake. Welcome to Spearhead Sundays. Thank you very much. Uh, Ruben Solo. Yes. Welcome. Your first time sorry, on the show. Pause you right there. Which is my mic number two? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yours you, is a lot lower, isn't lower, it? Lower. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Back up. <laughs> okay. All I right. I also talk a lot quieter than would you, you do. Would so you rather this? I would rather that. That's okay, much I better. Think yeah. It would be horrible <laughs> to listen to. <laughs> no, yeah. Not now, all the way up. Not all the way up. Turn you down. Okay. Turn me down a little bit. You are louder than me. Well, what if I just speak louder to compensate? That's fine. You're to already just assert speaking dominance louder. on the show. You're already speaking. I do. Loud. I do speak <laughs> very loud. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Welcome to Spearhead Sundays, guys. Thanks for being here. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you being on the show. It's really good. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. So, okay. Maybe that was a good gag that was to good. start things off. Yeah, I like that. Um, mate, welcome to the show. Oh, what are you doing? Sorry, I just, I just choked as soon as you said that. Oh, okay. Sorry, I've just... poisoned his drink. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of my braces? They, um, they're fun. I have, yeah. I have a question for you. Actually, mm-hmm. did you, did you get a choice when they gave you the braces of like cutler and stuff? Because yeah. I know they used to do that. You I went. Get a I went all silver. So that's like the classic. Yeah. Yeah. Because right, I, right. I figured, I figured that. You know what I reckon the big mistake is, mm. and it's also more expensive, is to get them teeth coloured. Oh yeah, that's weird. It's it's uncanny valley. It yeah, looks yeah, yeah, fake yeah. and weird because it you people don't notice it immediately. They just sort of recognise there's something off. It looks like you have like you've got growths on your teeth. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it looks like your teeth are just like real lumpy and bumpy, and mm. then they get discoloured really quick. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I think I think you just need to own it. Yeah. And you go. I have braces. Yeah, was uh, and spread your wings. Was gold an option? Gold was an option, but oh really? But I but I wear a lot of silver jewelry, that's so true. I thought I oh, let's match. Yeah, 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 do that. No, I think I think that's a that's a good idea. What you've gone for? I think so. I think so. I could I could have gone. I did think about getting like just multicolored bands, like do the six nine grills. Mm-hmm. I could do that. Mm-hmm. I could upgrade later in yeah. later oh, later yeah, down the line. Your- I remember someone I knew got like glow in the dark braces. That's sick. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. But but how how often are you like in the dark? Yeah. You yeah. Go, hey, check out my teeth. <laughs> it's a good party trick though. That is cool. Um pretty soon, right? Actually, currently, right now, the reason this episode's come out is because I've had my I've been decapitated. Yeah. yeah. I've had my head chopped in half mm. lengthways. Uh and uh Which and ways, I've right? Well, well, both actually. Oh, right. I get it. I get all of this cut off, and then yeah. and then they take oh, this, that out, and they cut it in half, and then they pull it apart, and I'm sitting here drooling with a with a giant gap too. It's crazy. It's horrific. Are you gonna have any scars on the inside of my mouth? Yes. Yeah, right. So you won't notice it. So they they pull this up. Yeah. And then they go. Eeeh. That's fucking terrifying. Yeah, I watched. I watched. I watched uh, seven seconds of the surgery and I cried. Yeah, <laughs> no, I wouldn't want to watch that at all. I thought it would that. be funny for a video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't stop replaying yeah. it in my mind. The noise, <laughs> awful, very unsettling. Because I was like, oh, I can deal with the 3D animation. That's mm. fine. That's a little bit of fun. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, because yeah, yeah. that's basically like The Sims. You know, so they, where you get they, to play with the slider to make your chin bigger. And- <laughs> I've yeah, done that in a video character. game before, yeah. but it's very different when you watch. So they had they have an actual video of like it happening to a person. Yeah, it's on YouTube. You can Google it. Far out. Is that allowed on YouTube? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Medical surgery medical surgeries are they're eighteen plus, but medical <laughs> right. surgeries right now you could watch a vaginoplasty if you want. Really? Yeah. Let's pull that up real quick. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> have a look here. YouTube. Um. Yeah. Okay. Vaginoplasty. Here we go. Oh my god! Robot-assisted penile inversion vaginoplasty. So this is creating a vagina out of a penis. Oh, really? Yeah, they turn it inside out. Oh, that's um. Yeah, it's not actually a big turn on, is it? Mm. Well, let's have a look. <laughs> this video may be inappropriate for some users. Mm. Do you understand? I understand. I wish to proceed. You wish to proceed. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Great. Robot assisted. Jeez, you know, this is the future. Robots are making trans people. <laughs> this is good. Nice. Patient is a 42-year-old male to female transgender.
transgender woman. Mm -hmm. She'd been on hormones for nine years. The yeah. fucking music? I like the music. That's good. <laughs> Her past medical history was insignificant. Mm -hmm. Breast augmentation. She obtained clearance from a psychiatric provider in presenting mm -hmm. for gender confirmation surgery. Yeah. Cool. There are oh. a few key surgical considerations. Just dot points so far. Vaginal length. <laughs> that's a... That's a that is a big consideration, isn't it? Or you can like it? customize how long your vagina is. Well, well, what if your preference would be quite a large membered partner? Uh, right. You would need quite a long. See, if you have a small penis, oh, I see. What do saying. you I see have what a shallow pussy? Um, I don't know. I really have never thought they about how it. they. They invert it, but they have to. Oh, I, I we're just going to sound like idiots because we don't know what how the surgery happens at all. But they have to hollow something out, right? Well, that's uh, that's what I that's what I would imagine you're going to get a little bit creative because you still yeah. need to wee, right? Sure. And you also, I assume, would like to have an orgasm still. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> so, so <laughs> where are you putting all the? And you would want all of the bits in the roughly correct position. Hopefully, as, as as a born woman, yeah, right. Well, you could sort of get freaky with it. That's true. <laughs> you could just get you could get creative. Yeah, well, let's put a little face in there. Yeah. Let's make it smile. A smiley face. What if a doctor was like, I reckon I could actually improve on the female form yeah. <laughs> and create like the perfect pussy. I've got some notes, God. Actually, yeah, yeah. put a vibrator in there. Yeah, that in would built. be good. Inbuilt double A's. Can we get some double A's in there? Make it glow in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's a good party trick. You know, it would be a really good test of your surgeon's skills is after surgery, you've got your brand new pussy. It's all healed up. It's mm. working great. It's functioning. <laughs> you go and you go to um, a gyno. Mm. Don't tell them anything. <laughs> right. Yeah, and yeah. just see if they, if they okay, go, oh, that's not supposed to be there. Yeah. Surely you would. Like it can't be a it can't be a perfect recreation of a vagina. Well, we've got four minutes to go. <laughs> we haven't even well, we've gotten into the dot points. Yeah. I feel like you're stalling. Yeah, you're right. Okay, let's plow ahead. See, a good question is obviously this video that we're watching is allowed on YouTube. Yeah. Will this podcast be allowed on YouTube? That's a great question. <laughs> I'm really risking my podcast yeah. for this. Then this was not planned, but here we go. Okay. <laughs> Robot assisted vaginoplasty. Right. Okay, that's oh. a that's a hog. Oh wow. Yeah. We started the penile dissection. Oh penile dissection. <laughs> oh, so he gets circumcised or she gets circumcised right. first. They yes. make a circumcisional incision. So not only is this person becoming the woman that they know themselves to be, they're also becoming a Jewish woman. <laughs> Faith-based conversion. As well. <laughs> we dissected this down to Buck's fascia with Metzenbaum scissors and continued until the I like that they use blocks for the diagram and not like... Mm. See, we're actually not seeing any uh, of the footage here. We're just seeing diagrams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, let's skip forward. Yeah, let's skip like forward a little wolf. bit. Okay, Ooh. I was oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, that that oh. looks like a roll up. I can't believe that's on YouTube. Yeah, that's uh that's an inside oh out my penis. God. Oh yeah. Look, I feel like oh, no. I feel like that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. That's enough. That's more than enough. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, oh. that's um that makes me very upset. <laughs> Good on her. Good on her. Good that's on what her. I'll say. And 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 this is what you're really here for, Ruben, to mm. learn. Yeah, 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 yeah. What have you learned? I've learned uh, that I'm never coming back here again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is – see, this is why I, before we started, Ruben was like, what would you like to talk about? I'm like, I'm not sure really. Let's uh, – <laughs> maybe I should have planned. Maybe. Because we got about six minutes in and started watching a vagina uh, <laughs> being created from a penis. So that's great. Um, mm. So, Ruben, you've got some shows coming up. Oh, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought I would reward you with a little plug. Thank you. Thank after you. watching that. Thank you. Can I have some more, please? Yep. Uh, yes, I have uh, shows in New South Wales coming up starting mm -hmm. June 16. Your um, first big tour. First big tour, yeah, Bloody yeah. Bloody Ruben spreading his wings. I know, I know. It's 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 a big deal. It's a yep. big deal. Mm -hmm. So come on down. Um, 
June 16, I think, is Albury. I've had an Albury show, which is, you know, probably a bad move. I don't think I can sell any tickets in Albury. But I had um, – I had I, did, I wasn't planning on adding an Albury show because I didn't like have enough people on the mailing list. Albury is like a creative decision. Yeah, for a well, first tour. That's right. Well, I had Canberra. I was we're driving up to Canberra and then to Sydney. And you Albury's do have on to the way. You, yeah, you do. I feel like it, when it's an on the way town. Yeah. If you make your money back. Yeah. It's kind of a win. Well, the venue's free. Well, so there you go. So if you pay for money. petrol, so you got to sell two yeah. tickets and you exactly, sweet. Exactly, that's good. Have you got there yet? Uh, yeah, we have actually sold two tickets. Exactly two tickets sold. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> By the time this, thank you. You've thank made you. nothing. Well uh, done. Yay! And making zero dollars is actually a huge achievement uh, yeah. on your first tour. Uh, <laughs> like, oh man, I broke even. That's yeah. amazing. Um. So Albury, and then and then Canberra, and then. Sydney, we're doing two. I think I'm probably by the time this has come out, I've probably added a third Sydney show actually because uh, nice demand is quite high in Sydney. Very happy with how Sydney's going. Um, so make sure you get in on that and uh, Newcastle as well, and then Brisbane. That's awesome. Yeah, well done. Yeah, thank your you. Canberra show is on election night. No, my Adelaide show, which will have oh. already happened by the time this comes out. Okay. It would be cool to do a Canberra show, particularly on election night. I'm thinking of Capitol. Luke. He's doing... Oh, he's doing... I think yeah, so. Or the, no, he's doing the night before the election oh, in Canberra, okay, yeah, so yeah, he's yeah. almost doing election night. Yeah, but you're yeah. actually doing election night in Adelaide. In Adelaide, yeah. Are you going to know the result by the time the show happens? Well, that's a good question. So the show's at 7 p.m., so it's like not a late show, so I suspect not... When do you find out? Whenever they, they just, finish counting. Yeah. Well, I mean, they don't finish counting until like days after usually. Yeah, But they right. usually have an idea of what's going to happen. Yeah. It just depends on how close the race is really. Yeah. It might not be called for a day or two um, or it might be called by 7 p.m. We just don't know. Well, that's probably going to be a pretty terrible show for you because it's <laughs> looking at the moment like Labor's going to win. <laughs> Of so you, you're going to be very upset. I'm going to be furious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you fucking kidding? What? <laughs> no. Uh, it's yeah. It's actually. Um Tensions are high. Yeah. Like if it gets called while I'm on stage, it's mm. just going to be. It's either going to be the best or the worst show. But <laughs> you're going to have to start the show with two boxes on either side of the stage and yeah. be like, if Labor wins, yeah. I will be reading these jokes. Yeah, yeah. If the Liberals win, inside it is a bomb. Mm, mm, mm. So yeah, really, really terrifying. Yeah. Um, I didn't plan for that to happen, but Scomo, that with you know, thank you. Yeah. I think it, I think it'll probably help help sell some tickets. I think it's a good selling. Point, it's pretty actually. exciting. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of fun. Yeah. <sighs> hopefully, hopefully you do find out the result. Who do you think is going to win? I think it's going to be. I think Labor wins. Well, I th- I'm just. But also, I, I wouldn't really up. be surprised no. if the if the Liberals win. It's just what happened last time is. Everyone thought Labor was going to win and then they didn't. So yeah. I just don't want to get my hopes up, but I'm going to be pretty sad. Last time, when when the Liberals won last time, I cried. Really? I, I drove. <laughs> With joy? <laughs> <laughs> no, sadly not. I, we were, uh. I was at home at my house with a but friend. But what, st- what were the stakes last election? Not much. And what are the stakes this election? Well, I kind of view this, this one as revenge. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... Like, this is what you get for not answering your emails. <laughs> yeah. Which is really the worst thing that he did, was just not respond yeah. to Pfizer. Yeah, I would have respected him more if he said, no, I don't want I don't want early access to no, the vaccines. No, yeah, no vaccines. I would have respected that a lot more than, oh, sorry, I didn't... Yeah, oh, well, oh, vaccines. Oh, sorry about that. Like, that's, right. that's some shit that I do at my job. Yeah, and and I tell I tell little dick jokes. Oh, sorry, dude, I missed that text. Yeah, my bad. Well, so yeah, it turns out the stakes mm. were high last time. Yeah, because you know well, we didn't know it, but there was a pandemic coming. True, <laughs> true. I guess I guess so. Yeah, that's right. Um, but oh, I'm just I'm just always concerned. I think I'm my big thing is like just climate change. <laughs> I yeah, like right. something to be done about that. Why? So, What's the problem? It's raining. That's true. It's raining exactly, right now, yeah. so I don't know what you what you're whinging on about. That's the you know summer was actually great this year, wasn't it? It was like not very hot. Yeah, it was pretty good. Mm. Yeah, not too many fires either, compared to the last one. Hey, that's so true. So, the liberals are doing a sick job. Actually, I totally forgot. We totally didn't get any fires this year, did we? Yeah, man, I'm starting to re- I'm starting to reconsider. Um, if we're sitting here and 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 bloody Albanese's in, it's not going to be easy, is it? No, it's not easy. No, I might vote. One Nation. I would love for Clive Palmer to win. 
That would be. Very I would funny. so love it if right now we were sitting and and Clive Palmer was like making his third <laughs> his third speech as Prime Minister, going, "I act, are you are you guys <laughs> fucking with me? I won. All right, what I should we do? Prefer that than the Liberals." Mm. Even though they're probably like Clive Palmer's probably worse, it, but, but it he would is, be undeniably funny. He's way funnier. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I around here, I've weirdly there's heaps of like pro Clive Palmer signs. Yeah, right. Did you notice any driving I in? Don't think I did. I see them all the time in Frankston, yeah. and I think they don't know his policies. They just like the idea of freedom, 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 freedom. freedom. and more freedom. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to argue with, isn't it? it it's hard to argue <laughs> with, uh, especially if you don't know what his actual policies are. Yeah. You know, if you just read that and you go, can't argue with that, and then you go, what do you actually think? You know, well, I could argue with a lot of that, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the poster is good the slogan. Poster's good. The poster's really good, good stuff. It's got that. It's got a good ring to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, I cried last election. So mm. That's right. The planet's over. Well, look at you now. Don't you feel silly? It's raining. It's raining. Yeah, yeah. I wasted those tears. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, you've uh, you've also ended your podcast. Yes. So, uh, hello, all Good of rooms. Ruben's uh, listeners, oh, um, all the homeless Ruben listeners who who just <laughs> desperately needed a bit of Ruben in audio form. Sorry, no <laughs> sketches today. Mostly inside out penises. Yeah. <laughs> bit of a different, bit of a different jump in content, but yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, I ended the podcast. It's, it sucks, uh, doesn't it? As, as a fellow ender of podcasts, there's nothing good about it. No, nothing It's not really. fun. Well, I mean, there's there's definitely some good things about it. I was mm -hmm. pretty... More well, free pretty, time? Most, yeah, I was pretty stoked about it, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the it is sad as well. Like, I think the podcast was really good. And if you haven't listened to it, by the way, there's 38 episodes of some of the best solo podcasting out there, in my it opinion. Was, it was, hey, hey, mm. yeah. second best. Second best? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Luke's was pretty good. That's true. <laughs> Look, are you are you really trying to say <laughs> that your meticulously scripted, mm -hmm. produced, edited, yeah. uh, soundscaped, hour long <laughs> podcast was better than it's me? Half well, half an uh, hour. Okay, it was better than me showing up for an hour and screaming with no plan. You're right. You're right. It's yeah. No, my, I apologize. I take it back. <laughs> That's right. There's there's nothing more powerful than a guy winging it every Sunday and go. Oh, what should I talk about? Where are we going to go? Inside out penises. Let's let's Why go not? into it. But you can wing it. Like I, I'm just not. I'm just a very. I have a very different skill set. Mm. And I can't. I can't just turn on a podcast and rant for an hour about. It. Like I'll just run out of things. I, I'm not very good at making jokes on the fly about things. So see what you yeah. really need. What you really need, Ruben, is is an ability to get offended by really small shit every time you yeah. leave the house. That's what this whole show runs off is is me interacting with a, a person behind the desk and going, "That's twenty minutes." Yeah, yeah. Is just just rage. My well, my podcast was quite angry as well, but it yeah. was all it planned was all very, anger. Yeah, it was already put on. Yeah, it was a, sort of a character, right? Um, but you're you're just actually an angry person. Oh, uh, I wouldn't. No, no, I'm striving not to be. Hey, mate, just lower your voice. Can you fucking? Uh, <laughs> how dare you say that I'm an angry person? Well, if I, I'll, I'll just say this: you're lucky that I've got braces because I've sworn off fighting. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. It's a good. Uh, I did actually. I did actually want to ask my surgeon, like, mm. could I ever get into a fight? <laughs> do you want to fight me, bro? Yeah. yeah. Do you, you want to fucking like? Oh, you think you can? Handle my skull while I want to try by combat. Yeah, I get. Oh, you got a, you've got a PhD. Cool, bro. Fight me. It's probably you know it's probably a good time to get into a fight because they're gonna fuck it the whole thing up anyway. Well, I was thinking that it would be way cheaper for you to just hit me with, with a baseball bat <laughs> and then I go in for emergency surgery. Then the government pays oh, for it. Oh wow, because it's that to save good. my life. Yeah, you're like, and then they go while well, we're in here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just I just go in and in, in my they they're looking for like medical like mm. alerts or anything. Some people wear necklaces that say I'm allergic to this. Yeah. You know, I just carry around like the surgeries that I need just yeah. in case. So they go, yeah. Oh, fuck while we're here, let's do that. Yeah, Save him yeah. some time. Um are you getting it done through like the government or is it private? Private. You're doing private. Well, I I got insurance. Oh right. Right. Cause here's the thing, okay? Public healthcare system is great and I'm all for it. Yep. It's my face. Yeah. You know? Uh, that's honestly, that's very fair. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I also, I kind of was, uh, I was naive about, mm. about it. I thought 
And when I went in there, I thought that uh, insurance would cover it if I had private health insurance. Right. Right. And that's what the surgeon said. And obviously he's not an insurance guy. He just goes, just go, here are the item numbers for the specific surgeries. Go and find an insurance company that will cover it and then they'll cover it. Yeah. I'm like, great. I went to the insurance company. I go, do you cover these two surgeries? They said, yes, we do. After a year though, you have to have insurance for a year. And I'm like, okay, very expensive. Like, yeah, that makes sense. Hundreds of dollars a month. Yeah. And then, but after a year, (coughs) fully covered. I'm like, so you guys will fully cover me. They go, fully covered. I'm like, okay, great. So, anyway, last week, gave them a call. I'm like, hey, guys, year's up. I'm fully covered, right? They go, yes, you're fully covered. I'm like, awesome. So, you'll pay for the whole surgery. And they go, (laughs) 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 gotcha. Fucking idiot. We'll pay for up to 75% of what Medicare says it's worth. Right. So Medicare says that my surgery is worth thirteen hundred dollars. Oh no! The the surgeon was like, "I disagree. I reckon it's worth eight. Yeah. So insurance goes, "Don't worry, we'll pay for seventy five percent of thirteen hundred dollars." Now, look, public health care system is great. Mm. I don't want someone making thirteen hundred dollars cutting open my head. That's so true. You know. Well, when I got, um, I want a guy to to be thinking the whole time. What am I going to buy after this? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't want a guy going, oh, fuck, this is all I'm getting, 1300 bucks. How's the yeah. surface at Macca's? Yeah. It sucks. That's true. You know, because they're getting, they're getting the minimum you can legally pay someone yeah. to do the job. That's what the surgery is. When I got my, uh, I got, um, I got a couple of things done to my nose because yeah. I have, like breathing problems and, mm. uh, and I still do to an extent, but it's way better. Uh, and we were going to go private and um, we were like locked in. And yeah. but then I, I called them up for something and they were just like reading me back the fees and I must have missed something. Mm. And they were like, oh, and then like 10 grand for this. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> say it again. <laughs> <laughs> so fucked. So yeah, that's, that's how I became a communist. Yes. I uh, went with the government. Yep. Which, uh, yeah. 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 It's well. so expensive. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think the insurance though is <clears throat> paying for the hospital stay. Right. Yeah, which I okay. think more, that's, more that's, so the second surgery will be crazy because it'll be three or four days in ICU. Oh my God. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Like the, it's a full on. Intensive care unit. Yeah. Do you have to like sign a waiver that says like we might kill you? Yeah. 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 I had to sign it's, that as well. It's, it's, it's Entirely likely yeah, yeah, that yeah. right now I'm dead. Dead, yeah. And while they're listening to this, <laughs> all right. And Ruben's just called it. If Kill I am him. dead, guys, um, it's his fault. Don't mm. go to his Albury show. Not that you were going to. <laughs> no, go see him. It's very good. Thank you. I shoot. Mm. I tried to come two times. I was too tired. Yeah, that's what happens, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I'm. Like, it's turned me into the worst friend. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'll see you. And then I, and then I, and then I, like five p.m. I'm like, oh, oh what yeah. day is it? Oh, I missed it. Shit. <laughs> I'm going to bed. But uh, I think, I think it'll be. I think I'll be okay. It's a very low fatality rate, and everyone just yeah. comes out being able to breathe and looking very handsome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, it. You have to. You have to assume it's going to be fine. But yeah. You have to sign the waiver just in case. Correction. Everyone comes out of the second one looking very handsome. Everyone comes out of the first one looking so much worse. They're going to give yeah. me a gap tooth. Yes. That's going to yeah. be about one tooth wide. Mm-hmm. It's awful. Your teeth are quite crowded at the top row. Is that, that's where you're getting it, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 So they're going to pull it out mm-hmm. and then and then I'll have a gap tooth and that'll be sweet. And, I'll, and I might drool sometimes when I speak. Oh, yeah, that's fine. And I'll also have something in the roof of my mouth to give me a big lisp. So... That's just that you just asked for that as custom feature. Yeah, I just yeah. I just thought you know just for a lot of people to have more pity on me. Can yeah, you yeah. can you please give can just fuck me up? I, yeah, it's almost like you kind of actually want the lisp at that point. Like mm. if you got a fucked face, you yeah. don't want to be walking around and everyone thinks you're normal but just ugly. You're true. Like, no, but I'm disabled actually, guys. So. That's that's true. That's why the braces help a lot. Yeah, because yeah, you yeah. know you know when you see a guy who's got a lisp or a speech impediment, mm. you're like, come on, dude. Yeah, just just talk normal you know go on you fucking faker you yeah. freak <laughs> what are you doing it's easy you've got a mouth so do i what's the difference you know mm. but uh a guy who's got like a bunch of metal gear in his mouth mm. it's good yeah what i am concerned about is do you go to the hairdresser every now and then no 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 i just get mom to do it actually right okay well this bit's uh 
you might not understand this, but maybe some of our <laughs> dear listeners will. You, when you, have you ever been to a hairdresser? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so you know when you go into the hairdresser, mm-hmm. <clears throat> you're like, I want a haircut and I'm yep. paying good money for it. Yeah. And you go in and you communicate what you would like to look like at the end of the haircut. You go, I can you please do this and that and then and then I'll look great. Yeah. And then they fuck you up and they yeah. don't do what you ask for. Yeah. And and then you leave and you go, That's horrible. I look terrible. This is this sucks. But it's okay. Because my hair will grow back, back, grows back. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. What if the surgeon does that to my skull? Mm, Skulls don't grow back, do they? They don't. No, that's interesting. I'll just end up... (laughs) <laughs> what if he just, just fucks me up and doesn't? It's like that's. What if I wake up and I look in the mirror and I go, "Oh, I'm very swollen." <laughs> I'll have to wait for the results, and then six months go by and I go, "Hey, am I still swollen?" <laughs> no, 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 no. There were no. This <laughs> is not what I asked for. There was no swelling. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and they go, I want a refund. They go, "Well, you should have asked for a refund within three months, mate." That's our policy. <laughs> that's yeah. the only thing I'm worried about is not getting what I ordered. Yeah, which is a risk, but I guess that's why you're paying full price. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't have gotten crossed. what I ordered if it was like thirteen hundred bucks. Yeah, it's not what you want to pay for. Yeah, I kind of want to. Thirteen hundred bucks sounds like a bargain, actually. It's a, it's too cheap. It's so cheap for yeah. someone to cut my head off. Mm. Like they're detaching the whole <coughs> lower half of my head. I like that's surely at least worth five. Mm, mm, you mm. know, how much is that? Is off? I mean, that's thirteen out of thirteen hundred out of your pocket, but then Medicare is covering a bunch of it. No, that's the ho- that's the whole total oh, really? price of the surgery. That does not seem right. So that's what the doctor gets paid, or the hospital gets paid. Or I don't know how it works, right. but it, the surgery costs in total thirteen hundred dollars. Like part one or part two? Part one and two. What? And part two is like so much more intensive and in depth. So I'm oh. thinking if I if I did it public, they'd leave scissors in there. Yeah, you know, that's that's so cheap. The guy would be doing it on two people at once. Just trying to make as much money as he can. You know, one for you, one for you. Oop, he's bleeding out. <laughs> no assistance, just one guy in a <laughs> In a garage. <laughs> he's like he's like serving Scary. someone. Someone comes in and he goes, oh, shit. shit. He's going to fry his fish and chip shop. <laughs> Pair of pliers. <laughs> gets, gets the fry pan and the pliers confused. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, see, that's, see, what I really want. I want the worst pain of this whole thing to be when I wake up and check my bank balance and go, fuck, yeah. that hurts. Yeah. That's all right. You bought a house. You sell it. You'll be fine. <laughs> Almost, but fine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I was like, what's the worst that could happen? I'm like, oh, I could lose the house. Yeah. That's pretty bad, actually, of things to happen. That's quite a bad thing. Right. Most people don't have houses, so that's you're, you're one step ahead. That's true. Yeah. That is true. Hey, this episode of Spearhead Sundays is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping, whatever you like, on the website. They've just released uh, some body wash. It's really good stuff. They've also got uh, a giant performance package. Comes with, like, underwear, crop preserver, ball moisturizer. It's good stuff, man. And, and they also have uh, body spray. They've got lip balm, which I've actually been using every single day because of my braces. It makes a huge difference. I was never a lip balm user. Uh, I've been using this, though, and it's really, really great. And you can use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. Uh, did I mention that this trimmer is waterproof too? From the shower to the lake, uh, not many lakes in Australia, from your chest scruff all the way down to your ball throw, the Lawnmower 4.0 is the best trimmer around. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. Support the brands that support the show. And let's get back to me uh, doing the, the show. So uh, do you have any, any surgeries like coming up? If you could if you could fix one thing, what would you, what would you fix? The sort of thingy about the penile inversion. Oh, yeah. Yeah, get that done. What, kind of, what type of depth would you yeah. like? <laughs> oh, I mean, surely you just go for maximum depth. Right, because what's the what's what's the, the drawback? What's the drawback is it better to have minimum depth? I don't know. I suppose that's less inversion, which might be safer. Do, I don't know enough about vaginas to. to <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's true. I don't I know enough if we about. Really, be jokey about this. <laughs> what do you mean? Um, this is a serious question. Yeah, right. Of course. Sorry. I genuinely would like to know, like, what would be the perfect <laughs> inversion or depth of your brand new vagina? What's, 
I mean, is there any benefit to having more depth apart from you can fit more things in, which, you know, usually not really a big concern? Well, you don't really know the size of your partner when you meet one. No, but like I think even a, even a shallow vagina is pretty deep. Like it's deep enough. That's true, I guess. I don't think anyone. But you like wouldn't want it to be to like a little puddle, and, you know? Uh, no. Like like one inch. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think. Yeah, that seems unlikely. That they would. You'd do want that. it to be like the depth where, like, if you stepped in it thinking it was a shallow puddle, you could mm. break your ankle. That's kind of what you want. Like at right. least like five six inches depth. Shh, yeah, I think they just keep going. Like, I think they just. You reckon keep... like a, just a hole all the way through? I think I've just. <laughs> <laughs> so All the you way can up look to the at throat. it. And you can see the other yeah, side. Yeah, see I like, like that. Right at the end of the tunnel. That's good. <laughs> I mean, they do just keep going all the way up to the stomach, though, right? Don't I they? don't. I don't know. <laughs> Vaginas. Yeah. Well, I mean, babies come out of there. Exactly. So I, yeah, I guess so. Must. I guess so. <laughs> so you. So maximum depth. But if you were but creating they, one, and you they went, might not do that for the surgery, yeah, because you don't have a uterus. So. No. Mm. Like you would, you would hate to be eating something and a little, and like a McDonald's chip comes out the other end. Yes, yes, you know, yes. That's yes. that's way too much depth. <laughs> that's too much. Yeah. No, that's yeah. That must be a different tube that connects to something else. <laughs> anyway, just great, just a great topic for a bunch of white guys, straight white guys, to be chatting about, isn't it? Well, you, you got to get the idea out there somehow. <laughs> you know, if you make it taboo, people won't accept it. That's true. How about Free this? Speech. You're going the other way. You're. Uh, you're outverting a vagina. You're creating a penis. Yeah, that one, I guess that one seems harder because you're sort of creating something out of nothing. Whereas the penis, you have something, you mm. can take it out and hollow something, you know, but. Or it, or it might be easier. Dude, how's this? Mm. This is what I reckon they're going to do soon. There was this guy I read this story about. He, he Somehow his penis got infected and fell off. Oh, that was me, yeah. 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 I, I, yeah, I was, I was telling you about it. Yeah, Look, yeah. That's why you were in the long sleeves. Because <laughs> yeah. what they did was they somehow created a penis out of stem cells oh, like and grew or... it at, on what? his arm, a new penis. Oh, right. Not from his old one, yeah, I don't yeah. think. They grew it on his arm mm. and then COVID happened, <laughs> right? So for me, COVID delayed my face surgeries, but that's okay, <laughs> right? Is this a true story? This is 100% oh true. Oh, my God. So he had this... Penis yeah. on his arm for four years. I just, Let me look it up. Now I'm talking out my ass. I'm pretty sure man penis on arm. <laughs> yeah, look at this guy. Oh, poor guy. Look at that. It's censored. Show me the uncensored. It's pretty big. you got to be happy with that. For a flask. Well, this is what I mean. Like if you can create your own, surely you go for like, like a cool length. Yeah. So we had it cut off his arm, and that's oh. the scar. Look, there's the penis. So I don't understand why grow it on your arm. Oh, right. Yeah, surely, like, I would like it to be grown maybe on my ass, although then you could sit on it yeah, and yeah. it falls off. I mean, why not just where it was before? What's wrong with that? Yeah, that's yeah. that's a crack. <laughs> well, yeah, why would you grow it on your arm and then move it? <laughs> yeah. Surely just grow it. There must be a reason. Something yeah, about there must the, be. Yeah, I okay. Don't know. Here we go. Live for Man, six years. Six years with penis attached to arm. Father, 47, whose penis fell off due to a blood infection, reveals how he lived with a new one attached to his arm for six years. As he said he burned it while cooking and sure, hit relatives man. in the face while hugging. Okay, was that an, was that an, that's a long title. First of all, that's huge the title headline. of the yeah. That's the that, that's the article. <laughs> you know, this is the title. Father forty seven, whose penis fell off due to blood infection. Okay, now you can't even shorten yeah, that. That's shorten just it. that's it's one thing. sentence. Ah, it they is, put yeah. a hyphen in there instead of a full stop. <laughs> that's huge. Guy. Oh, that's a Daily Mail. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Um, he had his penis amputated twelve years ago. That's incredible. Okay, here's what I don't like about this is he hit relatives in the face while hugging. Wear a long sleeve jumper. Yeah, also... Don't yeah, hug anyone. Sh sure, don't hug anyone. It's, yeah. It would be so easy not to do that. Mm. I feel like they just extrapolated and just added that to the article. It probably never happened. Yeah, it is, it is a Daily Mail. And also, like, how... Even if you were hugging someone, like, how mm. difficult would it be to avoid... Just go a wide. This is what I mean. I think it's huge. Or what about the one-armed hug? I've, you've done that when you're carrying yeah, 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 something. Exactly, exactly. You do the one-armed hug. You don't want to do the two-arm, one-penis yeah. hug. Have you ever 
I mean, you've got a quite a large member. Have you ever hit a relative in the face while hugging them? Uh, not accidentally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the okay. So in 2015, doctors revealed he could have a new penis grafted from the skin on his arm in a 50,000 NHS funded operation. Oh. Public healthcare system. Why aren't I getting 50 yeah. grand? That's 50,000 pounds. That's like a hundred. Yeah. Dude, this guy must have a doctor who's great at paperwork. Hospital delays followed by the COVID pandemic meant the appendage stayed there for six years, making his life a misery. That's so crazy. Malcolm revealed his, described his penis falling out of his sleeve while shopping and even hitting his loved ones in the face while he hugged them. Man, he went too big. That's his. He did. Yeah. That's the price big. of hubris. What? Do you, I mean, I guess the question on everyone's lips mm -hmm. is: Can you get an erection? True. Yeah. <laughs> what if he was sitting there like jacking off his own? Does he, arm? Would he still get like? Because obviously you'd still get like horny and stuff, but would it translate to the arm? I don't know. Daily Mail, classic Daily Mail, just not doing enough research. These are all the these questions are the questions. That we want to know. <laughs> okay, so they grew a penis on his arm. An expert in phallus construction. What a king, <laughs> Professor David Ralph. Hey, change that professor to a sir. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> knight that man right now. Um, I would love if his last name was Johnson. Yeah, that would be really good. Okay. He's a mechanic. Jeez, that would get in the way, wouldn't it? Yeah, at work? The, the penis oh. on his arm. No, not the penis oh, rig. The, the guy like making the penis the is surgeon, a mechanic. I was like, yeah, <laughs> just a job on the side. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> it, doesn't, if it's, it doesn't get a lot of work. It's really. through the public health care system. Um, the arm was chosen because it has skin quality and sensation. True. Right. Oh, okay. Because you wouldn't have any sensation here. Because so they could have done something. Off. They could have, like, for example, probably done something with like on the finger as well. But then it would just be like too much in the way. Dick fingers. Yeah, yeah. That would be. That wouldn't be good. No. Although I feel like I would. I would put up with anything to get my dick back. I don't. Think I would wear gloves. I'd probably be fine with no dick. You reckon you'd be? You would rather no dick for life than six years with dick on arm. Uh, I mean, as long as I can go to the toilet still. Sitting down everywhere you go. Yeah. Well, you have to be one of those guys who, so every time you use a public bathroom and there's urinals actually, available, quite, but you wait, every, yeah. you're the guy who everyone thinks has to poo. <laughs> All right. Give me the dick. <laughs> <laughs> While it was on his arm, he could not pass urine or get an erection oh, okay, on yeah. his arm. Okay, cool. Okay, I'm glad, um, glad we, we got to the bottom of that dude, one. Dude, they are answering the questions. Yeah. We take back everything yeah. we said about Daily Mail. You know what? I'll say this. Daily Mail's pretty good. Yeah, pioneering stuff. Really. They really are good. Uh, um, I would, I'd fucking slap myself in the eye with it. It's a dead weight. When you cuddle your Nan at Christmas, you hit her in the eye. <laughs> That's really good. Nan probably did, was did, stoked. Did Nan even it's know that? It's huge. Look at that. It's all yeah. pixelated, but yeah, that's yeah. massive. That's pretty good for flaccid. That's pretty good. That's, that's sometimes all people get. Yeah. Or bigger than all people get yeah, when erect. Yeah. Yeah, I, he must have like, mm. it must have been like a how big do you want it? Or maybe it was just like a bunch of doctors who just assumed how big he would like it. Yeah. Like, oh, let's fucking give him a whopper. Yeah. <laughs> I, sh I would, I guess if you gave him a small dick, it would be harder to reattach because there's a, like everything's smaller. It's more fiddly. Sure. So maybe for the benefit of him, they gave him a chode. Yeah, that that might be it. That you know, that might be the technical reason for it. The keen darts player also spoke of learning to tuck his darts under the penis. <laughs> oh my god, was that was that necessary? Daily Mail, <laughs> do we need that much detail? I love this sentence yeah. as well. The separated father of two is that. Yeah, we, the, uh, <laughs> Andy's divorced. He had no penis, <laughs> and he lost his wife. Come on, tell me about his hobbies. Probably his at the same time he lost them, I would have said. It did say that earlier in the oh, article. Oh, it did actually? Yeah, yeah, it ruined his life yeah. and he became homeless. Yeah. <laughs> um, so so th this man's like the complete opposite of you. Imagine like... He lost his penis and he was like, I can't go to work. Yeah. <laughs> I can't be a mechanic anymore. I've got no dick. To be fair, you do need a penis to be a mechanic. I reckon... 
just for the banter. If you if you were showing up to work at a mechanic and they yeah. all, and all the boys knew you had no dick, you'd never hear the end of it. That's true. Well, there's no dick, Gary. Is it better to have a dick on your arm though? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> probably not. I reckon here's what happened. His yeah. wife split up with him, mm-hmm. and you know how like people go you know through like a midlife crisis and mm-hmm. you know shave their head. Yeah, he cut off his dick. Yeah, and then regretted it. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> and had to get a, get a new one put in. Mm. Well, he had got a terrible blood infection, but pretty close. Oh right, okay. yeah, it was no fault of his at all. Well, I mean, that's what they say. Yeah, that's what that the would, mail says. You can't trust them, can you? No, and you, well, you can't trust this guy. Is the most important. So thing. what he's you're saying only, is this guy deserved it? I think this guy not only deserved it. I think he's he did it. I he did it he's, himself. He's the culprit. Yeah, mm, yeah. bit of self harm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so that's all hearsay, but this is the last question that we've got answered here. That's really oh, good. God. Um, Malcolm will also be able to have sex as doctors installed two tubes which enable him to inflate the penis with a <gasps> hand pump to give him a mechanical erection. That's He's a mechanic. That's perfect. S- he probably designed it himself. Uh, Every dude, erection this guy gets is a so mechanical convenient. erection. Like Fuck you, yeah, you'd dude. never have erectile dysfunction ever again. You just, yeah. well, just one second. Yeah. Let's go. And, you know, there's no such thing as not in the mood. I, dude, this You're is... All sweet. And he can wee. That's amazing. This could <laughs> Look at this. Look at this fucking oh. dude. Look at this bloke. I love... Okay, this looks to be a pre-operation photo yeah, because yeah, this sleeve looks bulge. very loose. This one is... Yeah. This is... He shouldn't have gone that big. That's his problem. That's way too big. It's, yeah. hu- it's huge. It's you a- can <laughs> see it in his... Like, that's going to... That's He's just moving the bulge yeah. now. Yeah. Because that's how big it is while – do you think it's that big because he can't get a normal erection so it's not going to – like it. Like, do you reckon it will stay that size when he when gets you, an erection? It'll just be harder. Well, no, it says, you can, it says you can inflate it so it must get bigger. Yeah. Wow, it gets even bigger than that. That's, that's a problem. That's inconvenient. Oh. <laughs> well, who's, who's, who's speaking here? Who's this quote from? Our viewers. Oh. Obviously, he's got problems in his life. He's got a penis on his arm and probably nightmares for the rest of his life seeing the original drop off. Poor sod. <laughs> 20 minutes into this and wondering how the hell any doctor could have thought grafting a penis onto the arm of someone so vulnerable was oh. wise. Yeah, he was a homeless guy. Yeah. They yeah, picked yeah, a homeless yeah. guy off the street with no penis. He was basically like, a rat. He was an experiment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, you know what? That Actually, I'm on the side of the viewer here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see any, how anyone could cope with that, let alone someone with an addiction issue and no support network. Well, really just piling onto this yeah. guy. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> so they, they picked like a homeless drug addict with yeah. no dick and how we're like, uh, we want to figure something out. He's got substance abuse issues. He's ugly mm. as fuck. <laughs> well, they didn't say that. You just saw a photo of him. So yeah, yeah, rude. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but not just, wrong. I thought I'd just pile on. Yeah. <laughs> Join in. Yeah. He's also wearing a fedora, which yeah. doesn't help. <laughs> you know, poor choice of hats. <laughs> why wouldn't if he was already wearing fedoras? Why mm. wouldn't they just put it on the top of his head? <laughs> <laughs> You've got a lot of sensation. Then you might end up with a hairy penis. Oh, that's true. Well, that wouldn't be good. Mm. Or maybe it would be. Depends on the type of woman you are. I guess so. Man, we're learning so much. I didn't think really that this podcast would be so medical. No, it's been very. It's been an investigation of sorts. It's been very informative. Mm. Absolutely. Um, well. I wonder if I have any emails to answer here from the mm, listeners mm, mm. Uh, some life advice questions uh, that I do get here at Spearhead Sundays. You can email the show at any time, podcast at Um You're still using a hanky. That's disgusting. Yep. And and I'll, and every time you pull it out of my presence, I'll remind you that, yeah, of that, no worries, no of that I hate that habit. Everyone does. Um, everyone does, really? No, no. Most people are much more polite. Okay. Really? Yeah. yeah. Most, people are, most people are very silent. It's actually a medical condition. Really? Hankitis. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's terrible. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Here we here we go. We've got this is the only email that I have. So if it's not very good, blame uh I can't say this foreign name. Um <laughs> You can't say it, why not? You just can't pronounce it. Or well, it's just like What's that say? Oh well, it's not a re- it's not it's a username, so mine of mm. Abijanu, Abjianu, 
Uh, no, the eyes before the J. Abajano. Do you need oh. glasses as well, mate? Man, I might, I might, I'm, every time I go to the doctor, I find out that <laughs> I need something else. I thought, I thought I had a blocked nose at the start of this. Mm, I was yeah. like, oh, that's why I can't sleep. I've got a blocked nose. I remember nose. talking about it on, on Luke and Lewis. Yeah. Because I told you about my surgery. Mm. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Because yeah, you were yeah. like, uh, oh man, get this done. Yeah. It yeah, really yeah. helps. I yeah. was like. That's gonna change my life. Yeah, it did change my life. Yeah, <laughs> very negative way. But I, but what I, what I did find out from that trip was the nose is not my problem. It's actually the recessed jaw. So now I'm going through all of this. Mm. But while I was there, he did tell me that I will also probably need an an open rhinoplasty. Yeah, yeah. So I've just been told by specialist after specialist that my entire head is just, just fucked. Add it to the list. Everything about it is fucked. I have. I'm. I well. I haven't been told this. But I haven't had anyone tell me that this is not true. I've been, I'm led to believe, or I'm, I'm inferring that I have quite a sound forehead. A sound forehead. I haven't had any forehead the issues. The word on the street, guys. Perfect <laughs> forehead. Say That's what, what you people like. Are saying. Say what you like about my nose, my jaw, my chin, <laughs> my teeth, my mouth, my tongue. But my forehead, forehead yes. flawless. Well, that's hearsay. But, uh, <laughs> I'm assuming is flawless. Many people have said that. Large, but perfect. Mm. I have two questions here for you. Okay. okay. Well, we've got a redeeming question if the first one sucks. Um, okay. This one. Have you read this yet? No, I haven't read these. Oh, I'm going in blind. Exciting. Right. Yeah. So this this podcast is completely <laughs> unplanned every episode. <laughs> and I'm shocked that anyone listens to it. It's, it's shocking that it's this big. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's what she said. How do you come up with interesting conversational topics? Mostly just Googling medical operations yeah, at apparently. this point. Uh, it makes sense to ask you this considering it's part of your job. Too many times I've found myself with some person I like who is in that gray zone between positive acquaintance and friend where I just don't know what to talk about. This yeah. is difficult mm. because the shit that's uh, actually going on in my head is a bit too personal and would bring the mood down. And it would be a bit inconsiderate for me to start ranting about my troubles that sit at the back of my mind or just some random thing only I really care about. And the other person doesn't know anything about um, this is a good question yeah. that I think uh, a lot of people never really work out. Pretty much everyone struggles with this. It's it's a very mm. common thing. Yeah. Um, do you have any advice? Man, I struggle with that so much, particularly mm. in high school. Of when, we, like, when I walked in here, it was like silence for 15 minutes. We just yeah. didn't say anything. Yeah, yeah. I, I said, was, Lewis, how are you? You just sort of ignored me. And then said, let's start the podcast. I said, what? <laughs> here we are. Welcome to Spearhead Sundays, guys. And that's about our time. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, it's been I have thoughts of murder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so just something like that yeah. will we'll really just change the mood. What may, might, maybe won't incite a conversation, yeah. but will change the mood. No, I think it's like a super common problem and I struggle with it. Honestly, it's not really about like, what can you say? It's about asking the other person anything. Well, this is, this is, I mean, that's the thing that I try to do is try and just be curious. Yeah. With people. So, I mean, the first question is often the hardest yeah. to get people talking, but like, as soon as you get someone talking, just like bombard them with questions about whatever they're talking. Why? Just hmm? who, uh, well, it, um, yeah, see the perfect case in point works, works flawlessly as when? we just, and there we have it again. Guys, he's the master. That's why he's the best. <laughs> I'm just giving you guys a little bit of a lesson on conversation science. No, but Ruben's right. It's so hard to think about what to say. Mm. It's way easier to respond. Yeah. Like if you're just walking up to someone, it's like, oh, what do we talk about? Firstly, you're also like thinking too hard. I used to do that all the time. I was like, yeah. fuck, what do I say? Yeah, what do yeah. I say to this person? How do I get along with them? Yeah. If you really break it down to just people like people, you're like, oh, I don't know if anyone would care about this thing that I could talk for ages about. So what you're saying basically is, man, if someone asked me mm. about a thing, I would be able to talk for hours exactly. about it. Yeah, right. You just need to flip that and go, instead of thinking about what should I say, you should find out something about the other person. It's all yeah. curiosity. Find out what they want to talk about. Mm. Yeah, I mean, go, what do you do? Like, do you have a hobby? What do you do for work? And bring up something 
in what's the your, What's your most traumatic experience? Sure, yeah. When was the last time you cried? Yeah. You know, yeah. Do you, how big is your penis? Yeah. What's that bulge on your arm? Yeah. <laughs> God, you're ugly. Let's talk about that. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, but it's it's all it's all that, and uh, also a really really good book, uh, literally about this is how to win friends and influence people. Oh yeah, yeah, very, yeah. very I, I've old read book. Parts of that, yeah, it's really really great. Really, it is actually, I think that's me. actually that's how I that's like one of the big points in that book is like ask questions. Yeah, like people do just want to talk about themselves. Yes. That's really the secret. So yeah. if you can just get them talking, then it's, yeah, it's, it's a lot easier than you think. As soon as you get them talking and just be curious, just ask, ask follow-up questions. Yeah, and try um, not to... Obviously, you don't want to interrupt do it, them and stuff, but like... Yeah, try not to do it in a fake way. Yeah. Like if you can genuinely... Everyone's, everyone is so fucking interesting, you just have to find out in what mm, way. Yeah. Like, look at this fucking freak. Yeah. <laughs> You haven't asked me a single question yet, Lewis. Um, Twelve inches. Yes, I did. I, uh, I wow. <laughs> I I asked you about if you were to get a vagina, what depth oh, would that's you go? Right. Yeah, that was yeah. I was a great question that you actually refused question. to answer. So I don't know what <laughs> the fuck apologies. you're complaining about. <laughs> um, and this is the second question. Um, again, you've come to two of the best for, to answer this one. How do you get better at comedy? <clears throat> Oh, I know, you know that I had two people on my show on Friday in, that I did in Melbourne mm. that were that were like I started comedy because of you. I was that's like, cool. Oh, I've only just started comedy. <laughs> yeah, because of me. There we go. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a chain of command. <laughs> it goes all the way to the top. <laughs> um, Why'd you start comedy? Uh, because of Lano and Woodley. All oh, right. Mm. There we go. How about that? Yeah. It all it all keeps going up. I wonder why they started comedy. Because of me, you know, if you, if, well, fuck, uh, <laughs> but it, this is a real dangerous line of questioning because if yeah. you keep going, like, who was your inspiration? Yeah. Who was your, and you keep going Bill back Cosby, and back and back, yeah. you're going to get all the way back to blackface. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh yeah. man, oh, when I saw the minstrel shows yeah. and there were like white guys up there in blackface, like just denigrating like <laughs> yeah. people of other races, I thought I can do that. Yeah, that's how I started. Yeah, it, go, it goes full circle. Um, I know you say that it's one of those skills that can't really be taught. Um, but can you try to tackle this question anyway? I'm sure that other listeners would find it interesting as well. What's the question? How do you get good at comedy? How do you get better at comedy? How do you get better at comedy? Yeah. I think you can get better. You can't necessarily get good. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that it's like what I mean by it, you can't be taught is like you couldn't come to me and be like, it's not like being an engineer. Mm. where like the, like yes. it's just science where like two plus two is always this and if you use this formula in the correct way, you will always get the correct answer. I 100% believe that some people are just good at comedy and some people are not and that's totally fine. Yeah. Like some people are mm. – like you, you comedians say all the time like, oh, anyone can learn comedy. I was never funny and I'm like, I think just think it's I bullshit. Don't, I don't think that's true. I do, I do think that there are – man – there, I've been doing comedy for since like 2014, like stand up, mm. Mm. and there have been so many people at open mics who yeah. I have watched every single week and gone, just in my head, yeah. like, you should quit for yeah. you. And yet here and I they, am. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like some some people just don't have it. Some people do. Yeah. You do see though, like. Some people go from incredibly unfunny to yes. funny. It's de- of sure. course. It's I wasn't possible. very funny at all when I first started. Exactly. Um, and I'm still trying to get there. Yeah. Um, but what I mean by it, you can't be taught is like you couldn't go to a master and learn a step by step lesson. No. You have to teach yourself. You have to learn by doing. Yeah. Stand up. And there's like basic rules that kind of apply to everyone. Like you know, tension and silence is yeah. useful and important. There are definitely skills you can learn. And it's definitely like, I like studying comedy and I've, I've read a lot of books about comedy and it's definitely helpful, but it's not going to get you very far. Like if that's, no. if you're not a funny person and you're like, I want to become a funny person, it's going to be an uphill battle. But yeah, like you couldn't go through a course and come out a good comedian. Yes. You'll just come out with like a lot of tools yeah. that you could maybe apply. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you have to do it every single yes. night it's and re- be shit and work through that. Yes. It's, um, yeah, it's really all about the experience. Because you need the audience feedback. Yeah. Like basically as you get, as I've gotten better at comedy, I've just kind of gotten better at guessing what is funny. Yeah. Like I'm more correct. 
now when I go yes. up. Like every time I go up to do a joke for the first time, I'm guessing. And all I've gotten better at is guessing, guessing a little correctly. Bit yeah. But every, every, you know, all the time I'll go up with an idea that will just bomb. Yeah. And I go, oh, fuck, that's too much. Or maybe I should change these words. Or maybe, the, maybe it's just, it was not funny and I was wrong. Yeah. Um, but you just have to go up there and do it every single night and listen to the audience feedback and pay attention. Like, are they laughing? Where are they laughing? Yeah. Are they not laughing for this big chunk? Um, it's all practice. It is still practice and experience. Yeah. So I guess that's the, how do you get better at comedy? Just, I mean, if they're talking about stand up in particular, mm. then you just have to do it. Yes. There's no, there's nothing else you can do. Just, you have to get up on stage night after night and be pretty bad initially. But yeah. Like better. you just bomb, you just like, it's like uh, music. If like, if like practice piano, like if you've never played piano before, you can play it and you can listen. You go, oh, I'm not as good as what I'm yeah. trying to because you have the reference of someone who is good versus you. Yeah. Uh, and then you can kind of practice and get better by yourself and no one could ever hear you and you could become amazing in your yeah. bedroom. But with comedy, you need the audience feedback because yeah. you can you can be thinking the whole time, man, this is so fucking – so often I'll write something like, this is fucking good. Yeah. This yeah, is yeah. so funny. And then you'll do it and you go, I was fucking <laughs> wrong. This sucks. Yes. I, this is funny for me but not for yeah. other people. So yeah, you need the you need the audience feedback, and it's good to be around other comedians who, who if you if they're an actual friend, will go, oh man, this bit wasn't good, or yeah. you know, often I've given you little tips of like maybe say this instead of that, and yeah. you've done the same for me of like, yeah. oh, you know, have you thought about going in this direction? Yeah, and then you try that, and then it gets better. Uh, and there are like, I mean, it also depends. Like, I don't know, you didn't read the full email. Like, I don't know where this guy is. That was it. That oh. was a full email. Like, yeah. is he? Has he done stand-up before? Because it's a very different thing. Like if he's been doing stand-up for two years and he wants to know mm. how to get better, that's a very different conversation as to like if he hasn't done stand-up before and he wants to get better. Have, if he hasn't done stand-up, that's all you just do stand-up. Yeah. But, you know, there are – otherwise it's like you to just – To me it sounds like a guy who, who, who wants to get better with social skills and then honestly it reminds me of me of like, man, if I want to do comedy, I'm going to have to figure out how to talk to people. Sure, yeah. You know, I mean like – Getting up on stage is probably, it's a real trial by fire, but like it yeah. will probably help you like gain yeah. confidence. Yeah, for sure. In social scenarios. There's um, nothing scarier than five minutes of silence. Yeah. <laughs> like, and and then the, there's nothing worse than, I remember like my, this hasn't happened for so long, but it's the worst feeling when, when you get up and you've got five minutes and you go up with one joke and it bombs mm. and you're like, fuck, that didn't work. That's all right. I've got this one. And then the next one just Bye. tanks. You're like, fuck. It's all right. I've got one more. Uh, and then you got like a minute and a half left and you start the new one and then it's even worse. You're like, shit, this is the worst experience ever. And yeah. then the sad, polite clap. All right, that's my time. I'm Lewis Spears. Yeah. If you can get through that. I've I've, I've started to enjoy a bomb. It, get, it, beca it becomes... It changes from terrifying and comes back around and, and starts Funny. being fun. I mean, often like I will rarely bomb in front of a good crowd because it's just yeah. like because, you know, we're both capable, competent comedians now, so it doesn't happen that often. Yeah. But, I mean, sometimes the crowd just doesn't connect with you and you don't click with them or whatever, so it can yeah. still happen. But, like, usually if I'm bombing, it's in front of, like, you know, seven people and everyone else on the lineup has also bombed. Yes. And yeah. I've come to enjoy that. Yeah. And every other comedian seems to hate it, but I yeah. kind of relish it. I'm like, I mean, I wouldn't go out of my way to do those gigs because, you know, I have to travel to them and can't be bothered. But, like, if I'm there, it's kind of fun. It is. It is because... But it's only fun because you have you have the perspective of like yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done good gigs exactly, before yeah, this yeah, and yeah, I'll yeah. do good gigs after this. Yeah. It's it's only horrible when it's like this is I'm gonna do this next week too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But when you have like, oh well it doesn't matter, I'll go do a show or whatever, I'll open for someone or I'll yeah. do my own show and it'll be fucking awesome. Yeah. You can just yell at the seven people and say something stupid. Do you still get like nervous before any gigs? I just get excited. I'm my, I'll get nervous if I'm doing something I have never done before. Yeah. So the last time I got very nervous was 
when I taped my comedy special because yeah, it was right. so important yeah. and it yeah, was yeah, so yeah. expensive and yeah. I'd never done and it had to be amazing. It was like yeah. the most pressure I've ever had. I got very nervous before the first taping. Yeah. But then the second taping the next night, I was like completely fine because I'd done it before. Yeah. So any anytime it's like the like the biggest show I've ever done, I'll get like a little bit nervous because I'm like, mm. fuck, it's different and new. Yeah. But other than that, I just get excited. Mm. How about you? Depends on the show. I used to get quite nervous um, during like just the, this comedy festival. I reckon it's gotten a lot better. Like yeah. if I'm doing my own show now, I don't get nervous at all really beforehand. Yep. I will still get, you know, I did get nervous like opening for you a few times. Yeah. Just maybe because it was like the crowd was just so much bigger. Yeah. You know, it was like whatever, 300 people. Um, Big in two tiers is very confronting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did get nervous. Yeah. So I, occasionally I will still get nervous, but yeah, it's like mostly not anymore. And even when I am nervous, obviously I'm not like, I was fine. I couldn't tell. Yeah, you couldn't Even tell. backstage, I couldn't really tell. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, I don't think I, I don't think I ever really got very, very like cripplingly nervous, Yeah. but I've seen it. I've seen other people go yes. through that. And it doesn't look fun. Oh, I mean, you would have seen me go through it. Like, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Before the, before the loogies, I yeah, think yeah, yeah, you before, were like, very, cause that was, first, that was actually the first, 500. The, uh, the first one. 2020 loogies. Yeah. That yeah. was in front of 500 and, and you were so nervous that, yeah. that it was like stressful for me and Luke. Cause that would have been like, <laughs> yeah, that would have been the biggest show I'd ever done. Oh, by, by a by giant a margin. Way. I don't think I'd even opened for Luke at that point. No, I hadn't. Cause I, no. Nah. Yeah. Cause I toured with him the following year. So I, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't have even done like 50 people at that point. And then suddenly I was doing 500. Yeah. In hindsight, that was probably like too much to thrust yeah. upon you at, no, the, at that time. But it was, it was yeah, it was, yeah. you did, you did really well. I did. But yeah. it was just beforehand. You were like asking so many yeah, unnecessary, yeah, yeah. like what about this? What about oh, that? Yeah. Cause I was like, I didn't yeah. know a lot of the things like about doing big rooms. Like, mm. Are they going to light me? Like, how's yeah. the mic stand going to be? Like, do I, yeah, there was just like so many logistical questions I didn't know. Yeah. And I think because Luke and I were like running the show, like the loogies, yeah, we yeah. were like, you're doing five minutes. Uh, yeah. We don't have time to like help you through this. We don't even care if you bomb, dude. Just yeah. get the fuck up there. <laughs> yeah, it was like for us so like, who cares? You're yeah, doing five yeah. minutes. If you bomb, it'll be funny. Yeah. And you were like, fuck, this is like the most important thing I've ever done. Yeah. It was just like a big mismatch of yeah, like yeah. stakes. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, like, like that, when it's a new thing, yeah. that's when I'll be like, fuck, this is crazy. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's all, but it's all like, it's all like with comedy and getting better at it. It's all just repetition and reps. And like the more you do it, the, the better you are and the less nervous you are. Cause like the first six months is just, Oh fuck. Mm. Like it's so weird. And you're walking in all these rooms in front of strangers and you don't know any of the comedians and you don't know the guy who runs it and you want to do well so that yeah. you can come back in a month or whatever. Yeah. Like the stakes are just so much higher generally. Yeah. Um, that it, that it's, it's such an uphill battle when you're starting, but once you get over that first year, it's like, all right, I can do this kind of, yes. yes. And I, I know, I know the rules and I know, I know the worst that can happen and I've, you've done well and you've bombed, so yeah. you kind of know the extremes of what can happen. Um, but yeah, I hope that answers your question. Mm. It's just like the conversation thing. It's just fucking practice. Yeah. Um, all right. I think we might wrap it up there. Is mm -hmm. there, is there anything that you've got uh, coming up that you would like to plug? I'm, I'm currently, I'm um, drooling in yeah. bed and I'm conscious and off my head on pain pills. So <laughs> just the shows. Um, yeah. A bunch of shit. Rubensolo.com has all my two dates, New South Wales and Brisbane. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, if you don't, if you don't, if you listen to this and you don't really know who I am, you can follow me. I do, I do sketch comedy mainly is my big thing. Really, really um, good stuff. Very different as well from like what I've done and what Luke's done. It's very mm, good. Mm, mm. Yeah. So Instagram, I do short ones. YouTube, YouTube, I do longer ones. Yeah. Yeah. Check it out. All right. Thanks Ruben for coming on the show. Thank um, you. and, uh, so depth. Hmm. I'm going, I, I strongly believe in maximum yeah. depth. I just think that there's no downside to maximum depth. <laughs> no, Whereas you, if you go too shallow, you're so. like, fuck. Yeah. Well, I mean, there might be some like, you might have organs in the way if you go maximum depth, you know. Medium depth. Medium depth. Nice, <laughs> okay, yeah, a nice, nice medium a nice depth. nice mean, yeah. <laughs> Great. Bye. Bye.